Now we have the pre-recorded audio side of my setup, and you can see that I have keys loops 1, keys loops 2, beat loops 1, beat loops 2, beat loops 3. And uh, what I do is I separate the loops that are tonal, um, that are uh, have pad sounds or synths or melody lines with the things that are just straight percussive, just straight beats and and shakers and, and things like that. And the reason why I separate them is because on my Motu, I have a total of 14 outputs. And so what I'll do is I'll send the keys out through one channel, three and four stereo, and then I'll send the loops out through one channel, one and two stereo, and then I'll go over to the click, and I'll send that to five, and now uh, the sound guy has complete control over the melodic stuff and the uh, the rhythm stuff. Because a lot of times, if there's a beat, the sound guy wants to boost, you know, the the kick drum or or kind of the low end on it to give it more feeling. But if they boost the low end on a keys part, then it's going to just sound super muddy in the mix. And so it just helps to have separate control. Um, the next thing that you'll notice is. Um, they're kind of arranged in scenes, kind of not arranged in scenes. And the scene is this horizontal line right here. And in live, that is how you can cue multiple clips at a time. So any scene that is not launchable, that has multiple clips that don't go together, I just title zero. And the ones that do go together, I have a name for it so I can launch it all at once. Like here you can see I have uh, the verse loop for Jesus, let me see your eyes. And then the chorus loop for Jesus, let me see your eyes. And... Uh, because there's two loops, it's hard to kind of click them both the measure before we're supposed to come in. And so live makes it easy by having the scene launch grid. And so I can play the verse loop. And then any time one bar before uh, the, the next bar, I can click and it'll cue the next scene. So what I can do is I can trigger multiple loops at once without having to worry about, um, you know, hopefully clicking them in, in time and, and figuring all that out. And then the other thing I do is uh, I, I uh, assign some of the scenes to letters on the keyboard. So for example, that uh, stop clips, I don't want to take my mouse and scroll over there when I'm playing live. And so... Um, I just have it assigned so when I hit M, it stops all the clips and I don't have to even touch it. And the cool thing about Live is it has this thing called MIDI mapping too. And so if you have a control surface, you can actually assign any of these clips to your control surface and you don't even have to touch your computer. You can just touch uh, you know, a beat pad or something like that and it'll stop all the clips. Um, next we have kind of the, uh, the layouts that I have for cycles. And a lot of times I layer these in multiple layers. Um, this first one over here is 140, so I'm going to change the tempo. And you can see on this one I have a MIDI recording, not just an audio recording. And the reason why I record some MIDI um, loops on top of the audio loops is because when you're playing uh, a set live, a lot of times it's helpful if you want to layer keys parts and do two different ones at a time then you can do it that way. Also, if you're starting a cycle, sometimes it's just hard to uh, to get everything ready to go and then make sure the volume is all, uh, all perfect when you come in. Sometimes it's just helpful to have it looped for the intro. So uh, this cycle, for example, um, I have the melody line going for the intro, and then when everything kicks in, I'll actually play it myself. So I'll arm the track, put in the intro, then I'll play it myself when it builds. And I'll bring it just to the B. Stop the clip. And you can see I have the different options. I can go to the intro at any point. I can bring in the beat with the synth line. Or I can bring in just the beat. And it just gives me flexibility when I stack them like that. Uh, another example is this next cycle down here. 
uh, which is 76, so we'll change the tempo. And uh, this one um, is a little different because I'm, I'm not going to click the entire scene immediately. I'm going to trigger the loops individually, but I don't need to do it in the scene because I don't actually trigger multiple loops together. I trigger them one at a time. So I'll start out with this, uh, this piano pad kind of noise. Just kind of let that kind of set the atmosphere. Then I'll come in with like this little sub bass loop. Then I'll bring in this click part a little bit later. Go ahead and arm the piano because that's what I'm going to play on it. Now I'll bring the rest of them in at once. Two, three, four. Now I'll take out that piano pad sound. kind of opens up a little bit more. Now just the beat. I'll take the beat out. And so you see, I have just these multiple things I can pull in and out because I can't leave everything going at once because there's bass, electric, acoustic guitar, drums, and singers, and I would be taking up the entire mix. So I have all of these at any point. I can bring them all in to give it a super full sound, but most of the time I'm only leaving one sound at a time. Um, but I'll leave in the different scenes so I can bring them up at any point. And then just the final thing in here is uh, I, I leave audio effects on per... per uh, Per channel and I'll do kind of what I did no one else can love you and have an audio effects rack um, for a lot of them but a lot of times I'll just leave in the plugins I, I use the most and know how to use and at any point I can bring it in so here's like the beat I change this to 140 that's a little better you know like an overdrive like a gate an EQ that I can you know boost the low end onto Different EQs, delays. And I've used those sounds enough that I can kind of know what plugin is going to do what, and uh, I can just kind of manipulate it live. And that's kind of the fun of it. A lot of people just think that doing beats and stuff is just super stale and unprophetic and unspontaneous because you're playing something that was previously recorded, but it's really not. You can do a lot of things to it to affect the sound, and it doesn't make it less prophetic or mysterious just because you previously recorded it. Um, so that is my basic live scene. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, the next two weeks I'm going to be doing videos on beats, how to build them, how to use them in worship songs and in prayer cycles, um, different things like that. Um, and then the last week I'm going to be doing a video basically on what you guys think is the most helpful. So go to my blog and comment on this video, on the next videos or any of the articles and, or my keyboard setup page and just let me know what things would be helpful to you and uh, whatever gets the most comments, we'll do a video on that. <laughs>